Hello, BookTube, and welcome to uh, day whatever of Vlogmas. I've completely forgotten the day, of course. And as you can tell from the racket, I'm outside. <laughs> I have pants on and everything. I'm in Boston, and I am in front of the Boston, Boston Symphony Hall, uh, which is a, a landmark on my route. And I figured since we're doing Vlogmas, I might as well do that. Uh, this is a, a rather famous building here in Boston, something of a, a tourist attraction. Uh, it was made in 1900 by the architectural firm of McKim, Mead and White, the Holy Trinity who also gave us pause for blessing, the Boston Public Library. <laughs> and they, they consulted a whole bunch of uh, acoustical experts, including one world famous acoustical expert, in order to make this a perfect concert hall. The Boston's marquee or orchestral organizations had been bouncing from building to building for half a century. They decided they would make a hall and they patterned it after the old Gavanta House in Leipzig, uh, which was destroyed in World War II, but uh, has since been rebuilt, and which was itself a marvel of acoustics. And the, uh, their attention to detail paid off because the, the acoustics for Boston Symphony Hall were at the time and have been ever since a marvel <laughs> uh, that has brought a whole bunch of great performers and orchestras and whatnot uh, here to the hall over, over the, uh, the century. Uh, it's an experience. If you're in Boston for any length of time, you really ought to indulge yourself. The tickets are not that expensive and can usually be had at a discount on Thursdays. Uh, and uh, the inside of the hall is astonishing. It's full of statues, it's full of old leather work, and uh, you, you're noticing all that and you're ooing and aahing until the, the orchestra starts up and then you realize what the acoustics are like. Uh, this, this hall has been home to a lot of history. Uh, despite what you may have heard, despite any attempts to relocate America's orchestral history to New York or Philadelphia or even, God help us all, Chicago, uh, it all started here and it all had its, its, its youth and its adolescence and its noisy puberty here. All the major works, all the major performers, all the major groups all came through here. Um, and the, that makes it all the more frustrating for me. The Boston Symphony Hall is a bit frustrating for me as a Boston landmark because it is so indeterminate. Because it shows how, uh, <laughs> how confused a city can get if it starts to mix public financing with corporate financing. Uh, if, it's, if, it's, if the financing is all public, then you have a room full of people and they're putting up money and they get to make common sense decisions. The minute you get the city involved, everything goes to heck in a handbasket. For instance, if you go inside Symphony Hall here, you will see uh, that over the stage, there is a gigantic shield, a guerdon, that has Beethoven's name on it. And there are other shields and they are empty. Even now, a century later, they are empty. Beethoven's the only name in the building. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, and not the original plan. And if that's true on small scale, when you're inside looking at a decoration feature over the stage, imagine how much more frustrating it is on the large scale. Because what am I calling this building in 2018? I'm calling it Symphony Hall. I'm not giving it a name because it doesn't have one. I'm giving it a description instead. And if you look, you will see there is a, a plaque. <laughs> it has been there since day one. And it is empty. <laughs> it is empty. All of the plaques on the building, all of the guerdons, all of the insignia, everywhere, all the way around the building are empty. Because it doesn't have a name. I think that it should have one. And I think if people, instead of corporations, had been involved, it would have been given a name and we'd be calling it something for the last hundred years instead of describing it by its, de its definition. I think that I know the name that it should have. There was a man who was very instrumental in getting this done and in getting everyone on board. All the private financing that came to this building to match city funds over the years came largely from the influence of one man. I think his name should be on the building. But I guess I should be careful what I wish for <laughs> because if the city ever decides to name this building, I have a feeling they're not going to name it for the old colonel. Instead, they're going to name it probably for the fourth-rate uh, musical hack who was the music director here at Symphony Hall for probably 275 years. His name was Seiji Ozawa. He was entirely derivative and a bit of a moron. And, but I'd be willing to bet that if I see Symphony Hall named for someone in my lifetime, it will be called Ozawa Hall. And I will just have to grumble. I'll make a whole new video. <laughs> but anyway, that is Boston Symphony Hall. It's a, it's a lovely old building. Goes all the way around with collars and pillars, pillars and whatnot. McKim, Mead and White did a really good job. Hopefully in, in the course of Vlogmas, we will get to uh, their masterpiece. 
which is the Boston Public Library, the old building of the Boston Public Library. But for now, <laughs> I've got to get on the road. <laughs> so I'll wrap this up, this vlog, and I will see you soon. Thank you, BookTube.